Ivor's friends. Most people have friends. You and I have friends. Dogs and cats have friends. Of course, it is not so easy for a railway engine to have friends, particularly an engine like Ivor, who rarely meets other engines of his own age. Even so, he does have friends. Apart from Jones the Steam, Die Station and the other people he knows, Ivor's particular friend is Bluebell, who is Mrs. Porty's donkey, and, of course, the birds. I suppose the birds are fond of Ivor because he has a warm boiler for them to warm their thin feet on in the cold weather. Take today, for instance. There was Ivor the engine, puffing along the line from Terwin with Jones the steam, his driver, in the cab, and any number of birds clinging to his boiler or flying along beside him. Perhaps Jones the steam was a bit put off by the birds fluttering around him, or maybe the cold weather had shrunk the rails, but whatever the cause was, Ivor had an accident. His wheels slipped and bumped and came off the line right in the middle of the long pier bridge over the lake. It wouldn't have been a very serious accident, except that when Jones took the big crowbar and tried to lever Ivor's wheels back onto the rails, as he had done many times before, he leaned over too far backwards. Oh, you're a heavy old engine, he grunted. The wet crowbar slipped in his hand and he fell back, not onto the sleepers, but head over heels off the pier into the icy water. Oh, yipe, it's cold, he squeaked as he floundered to a wet, slimy pier post and clung onto it. Ivor, he shouted, quick, go and fetch Owen from the signal box. Ivor let off his brakes and tried to move, but of course he was still derailed and couldn't move. So Owen the signal had no way of knowing he needed help. Mind you, he might have guessed something was not as it should be, because the air all around the signal box was full of birds, all tweeting and squawking and flapping at him in great agitation. Oh, go away, you silly birds, he muttered and closed the window. At once the birds turned in the air and flew away. Owen watched them fly away and scratched his head. Odd that, he muttered to himself. They don't usually take any notice of what I say. Huh. The birds flew back to the pier. They found Jones the steam still clinging, shivering to the wet pole. Oh, hello, birds, he said. I wish you were eagles and could lift me out of the water and up to Ivor. Perhaps one of the birds thought he would try because he swooped down and twitched off Jones's cap. Hey, bring it back shouted the cold engine driver, but the birds were far away, speeding across the water towards the distant signal box. Owen the signal was having his tea. He was just going to take a mouthful of meat pie. In fact, he was definitely looking forward to taking a mouthful of meat pie. He brought the meat pie towards his mouth with every intention of taking a large, delicious bite out of it when, in the nick of time, a bird swooped in and dropped a rather grubby old cap over it. Oh, when the signal sunk his teeth into Jones's cap, it was a disappointment. He gurgled. Owen looked at the hat. That's Jones's hat, he said. Then, at last, he knew that something was wrong. Trouble, is it birds? he asked. He could tell by the way they were squeaking and flapping that there was trouble, so he ran down and pushed out the flat lever truck they used for mending the line. He could see Ivor far in the distance, and he swung the lever up and down with all his might to send the truck whizzing along the line towards the pier bridge. The birds flew on ahead and circled round the engine. Hello, Ivor, 
What's wrong? shouted Owen. Went Ivor's whistle, which did not tell him very much. Where's Jones? shouted Owen. I've got his hat. I'm down here, came a small shivery voice from under his feet. Owen looked down and saw the unfortunate Jones clinging to the wood. What on earth are you doing down there? he asked. Freezing, replied Jones icily. We must get you up, said Owen. Yes, please, replied Jones with his teeth chattering. There was a long chain in Ivor's toolbox. Owen lowered it down to Jones and managed to haul him up. Oh, thank you, said Jones. You get into the cab by Ivor's fire, commanded Owen. Jones did so and crouched shivering over Ivor's firebox whilst Owen took the jack from the lever truck and lifted Ivor back onto the rails. Then Owen coupled up the lever truck and climbed into Ivor's cab. Uh, how do you drive this engine? he asked. You don't, replied Jones. Just, uh, just open the regulator lever a shade and Ivor will drive himself. Owen did this, and Ivor pushed the lever truck gently back to the signal box where Jones sat sneezing and snuffling, wrapped in a blanket in front of the stove, thawing out his frozen limbs. Owen the signal looked at him and went to the telephone. He rang Dr. Winkle and told her what had happened. I will come over in my car at once, she said. Dr. Winkle listened to Jones's chest. She took his temperature and she spoke to him sternly. This is not the weather for, for the bathings, she said. You have a bad cold. You will go home to bed at once and stay there. But I can't, said Jones. It's Ivor's choir practice tonight. We have to be a grumbly siding by five o'clock. Then Ivor must go by himself, announced Dr. Winkle. If you are outside any more, you will have the pneumonia. Come, I take you now straight in my car home. And straight in her car home, she took him without any arguments or excuses, leaving Ivor and the birds by Owen's signal box. Oh, I don't know, sighed Owen. I have to stay here at the signal box, so I can't drive you down to Grumbly, but oh, it'd be a shame for you to miss choir practice, what with a festival coming soon and all. Oh, I wonder what to do. Went Ivor's whistle. What? You reckon you can get down there on your own? Went Ivor's whistle. <laughs> All right, then we'll try, said Owen. Now, birds, listen to me. The birds lined up on top of Ivor's cap and listened to him. You go down to Grumbly with Ivor, and if anything goes wrong, you fly straight back here to me. He knew the birds understood, so he made up Ivor's fire and checked his water. I will ring down the line and get a message to Evans the Song, the choir master, and he can make up your fire again before you go home to Llanyog. Off you go now, and take it very easy on the points. And very slowly, Ivor moved away. He picked up speed, and by the time he vanished round the corner, he was puffing merrily along, surrounded by a cloud of birds. He'll be all right said Owen to himself. The birds will look after him. They are his friends.